stoichiometry is the calculation between different reactants, reactants and products, and different products in a chemical reaction, calculating the amounts of them. So we're going to use this to be able to predict how much product we can make from a certain amount of reactant, or how much reactant we need to make a certain amount of product, or how much reactant will react with another reactant. The heart of stoichiometry is the mole to mole ratio. This is based on the coefficients, which are a molar ratio in the chemical reactions. So in this chemical reaction, we have one mole of calcium uh, silicate reacting with six moles of hydrogen fluoride to produce one mole of calcium fluoride, one mole of silicon tetrafluoride, and three moles of water. So the heart of it would be the amount, the compound that we're starting off with. Let's we'll call it A. That could be a reactant or product, but it's the amount, the known amount that we're starting off with. We're multiplying by coefficient of what we're looking for or the coefficient of what we're starting off with. That will give us moles of the compound that we're looking for. And again, that can be uh, a reactant or a product. And the coefficients are molar ratios. So normally I write moles of B over moles of A. And regardless of how we start these problems, whether we're starting off with a mass, a concentration and volume, a pressure, volume, and temperature, we convert them into moles first. Then we multiply by the ratio of the coefficients and we get moles of what we're looking for. Then we can convert that moles into mass or concentration or pressure and volume. So starting off with this uh, molar ratio, we have one mole of the hydrogen fluoride. How many moles of the CaSiO3 will we need to react with it? So this is our starting point of one mole of HF. And these reactions, in addition to whether we have our units, in addition to moles, grams, we should specify what compound we have also. So we're looking for the CaSiO3. It has a coefficient of one. We're starting off with the HF with a coefficient of six. So moles of HF cancel off, leaving us with moles of the CaSiO3. And um, running that through a calculator, we get a 0.17 moles. So it's going from a reactant to a reactant. Now we're going to go from reactant to product. So we can go from any reactant to any, any reactant or any product to any product or any reactant. So going from HF to H2O, we start off with our beginning amount, one mole of HF. We're going to H2O, coefficient three, so three moles of H2O, or the six moles of HF. Running that through our calculator, we get a 0.5. I have all moles of the water. Sometimes we're combining mass moles together. So I'll do two of those problems. So starting off with the one mole of the HF again.
if we're looking for the calcium chloride, we're doing the ratio of the coefficients again, so one mole of the calcium chloride over the six moles of HF. And I like to write out one long line of the calculation. You can do it in separate steps. So uh, this would give us um, 0.17 moles of the calcium chloride. Um, but to get to grams, we need the molar mass of calcium chloride. So we add up the mass of one calcium and two fluorine from the PR table. And that gives a mass of 78.08 grams per mole of the calcium chloride. So moles of HF will cancel off, moles of calcium chloride will cancel off, leaving us with grams of calcium chloride. We run this through our calculator, we end up with 13 grams of the calcium chloride. So that's going from moles to grams. It's a two-step process. Moles to moles is a one-step calculation. Grams to moles would be a two-step. But we'll start with converting the grams into moles first. So we have uh, three grams, uh, 30 grams, sorry, 30 grams of HF. So we have to convert this to moles. So we uh, figure out the molar mass of HF adding up the atomic mass of one hydrogen and one fluorine. We end up with a 20.01 grams per mole. So to convert grams into moles, we take mass divide by molar mass. So I'm multiplying by the inverse, that's equivalent to division. So our grams will cancel, giving us our moles. So now we go to our, our stoichiometric ratio. We're looking for SIF4, that's one, one mole. We're starting off with HF, which is six moles. So our moles of HF will cancel off, will give us moles of SIF4. So we run this through our calculator and we end up with a 0.25 mole of our silicon tetrafluoride. Okay, so let's take this to a full mass to mass calculation. So we're starting off with 47 grams of iron in this reaction. We're not starting off with, but we're looking to get 47 grams of iron. And we want to know how many grams of the rust, iron-free oxide, we need to use to get that 47 grams of iron. So in our calculation, we're starting off with the 47 grams of iron. So this is going to be a three-step process now. Our first step is to convert our mass into moles. So we're dividing by the atomic mass of iron. So the grams will cancel off, giving us our moles of iron. Now we go to our stoichiometric ratio. We're looking for the iron three oxide. We have one mole of the iron three oxide. We're starting off with the iron. We have two moles of iron. So moles of iron will cancel off, giving us moles of the iron three oxide. Our last step is to multiply by the molar mass of the iron three oxide. So we added up the atomic masses of two irons and three oxygens, and that gives us 159.7 grams 
per mole of the Epi203. So the grams of iron cancels, the moles of iron cancels, moles of iron three oxide cancel, leaving us with grams of iron three oxide. So we run this through our calculator, you end up with a 67.2 grams of the iron three oxide. So this is now a three-step calculation, taking our initial mass, turning it into moles, turning the moles of the initial compound and the moles of the desired compound, and then turning those moles into mass again. 